So I'm here with Ravi. He's actually on the EBR forums. Hi, hi, Kurt. Good and to see you. you're also on Endless Sphere, right? Yes, I am. Uh, Ravindra K81 on Endless Sphere. Yeah. Okay, and you had some questions. We're, yeah. we're here with Rakesh from from Falco E Motors. Yes, so. uh, I know. I was uh, fascinated by the technology that is in this uh, in this kit, and uh, uh, there has been a huge debate on different forums about this kit because this is a premium kit, and it, it is the only kit that has five phase motor or something. And, and Rakesh will explain more on that. Uh, and people were discussing uh, why this is better or why not this is better. And the one of the question was, um, this has something called cogging resistance. And people were nitpicking on so many different things. So, uh, you know, I just quickly wanted to test and see um, the, what the resistance feels like in the wheel and what differentiates this from bionics or any other direct drive. Uh, motors. It's a good question. Okay, here's the man. Well, see, Kurt, as, as, as uh, you know, we talked about the seven phase and the three phase. We've done the seven phase in, in Wavecrest and then three phase in the... So the, the cogging was a big problem, mm -hmm. right? The, the natural uh, attraction of the magnets is a big problem, right? So here in this one, we claim zero cogging, right? Mm -hmm. Now zero, it is not literally zero. It's like 0.001 this cogging torque. And, and to, to be clear, okay, so for layman right there are magnets in a direct drive motor big magnets and there's a stator and the stator puts electricity creates an electromagnetic field and that's what moves the bike but if you've got the system turned off those magnets are they're still there and they're repelling the stator and that creates cogging okay that's so right. we're on the same page yes. so that, that's exactly right that's exactly right so so that's a big problem Right, so we don't want gears. You know, basically what we have established is we don't want any gears in a motor because it may, it, it's going to be quieter and longer lasting. Yes, that's right. That's and, okay, right. Great. So, so, so our our philosophy has been that we really want a pure, silent, and very reliable experience. Yes. Right. So that's the heart of our philosophy. And here we have got, uh, uh, basic one of the tenets is that you have to have a zero resistance paddling that you should not be able to feel the motor. I see. Right. So this motor is that, that you don't feel the motor when you're pedaling. So if you see here, I can basically turn the motor very, very uh, easily, right? And, and it has got two bearings on both sides of the, in the motor, but the, but the motor can turn very easily. There is absolutely no more force you require than turning this wheel here, right? I do not require any more force than turning this. Of course, it doesn't have the mass of that wheel, but uh, my force is no more, is no more I see. turning this than this. Now people have said, well, how do you actually verify that you have a zero resistance, right? So, so, uh, so one of the thing is, well, you know, when you, f when you feel it, you know it, right. right? There is no way for me to prove it. You just have to feel it to know it. Got it. Right? And here we can do fairly, uh, you know, this, and I think it's it's let oh, me it's shut off. Oh, it's in pedal assist mode. Yes. So we'll shut this off. So if you see here, right, it's fairly easy to pedal, okay. right? So it's fairly easy to pedal, and and the motor can spin for a long time, right? Now this wheel has come to stop. Also, we have got sealed bearings inside. Okay. Right. So sealed bearing obviously have got some resistance where. Uh, they have to because of the structure of the bearings, right? So the whole motor has really zero resistance hmm. paddling. Well, while we're on the topic, how much do your kits weigh? I, I know you have several versions. There are like three in the U.S., right? Can you tell me how much each different motor weighs? So this one here is about uh, uh, nine pounds. Nine the pounds. motor, nine pounds, uh, four and a half kilograms, nine pounds. Is and this motor. is the 250? This is 250, 500 watt uh, platform. Got it. So we have got, we call it HXM 2.0 mm -hmm. platform. So it's basically, uh, 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 the platform is about uh, nine pounds here on the motor and then you have the battery which is about five pounds or so. Okay, right. so we're like 15 pounds and as you said before, the controller is built into the, the hub yes, motor on yeah. your kit. So it's right, kind of right. seamless and you'd have fewer things hanging yeah. off. Yeah. And then you've got other kits too. So this is sort of your starting level one and then it, it jumps up to 750? 750. So 750 is about uh, six and a half kilograms or about 13 pounds. 13 pounds. Right? And then you have got the 1000 watt and 1500 watts which are about seven and a half kilograms or about 16 pounds. Okay, you know, excellent. Three. So 16 plus 5, so your heaviest kit is about 20 pounds, but you're getting that 1,000 watt 
um, with extra torque right. and the power. That's right. That's right. That's okay. right. So you have you have got you can run uh, you can run. So these are basically 36 volt batteries. So 36 volt batteries with that package, obviously you have got smaller duration of power, mm -hmm. right? So the the most optimum use for 36 volt 11.6 amp hour is about to 500 watts, 750 right. watts. And that's right? this kit. So that's it's right. the lightweight kit. Yeah. And do you offer other batteries too to, to complement the higher power motor systems? We have we have uh, looked at. We don't have any batteries at this point of time. We have got 48 volt rear rack battery which is uh, uh, available in limited edition. I but see. the rear rack becomes more of a problematic attachment. Uh -huh. to you get problems. rear heavy. Yeah. So people that buy those those higher end motors, those more powerful motors, are they people just doing aftermarket kits themselves and they've got their own batteries or who uh, more, buys those? A lot of people buy, buy uh, you know, especially for 1000 watt and 750 watt, uh, they, they have their batteries. They have their own batteries. Their own and own other batteries. people, I, the direction you guys are going is to actually sell these through dealerships like the electric cyclery in southern california right yes. they, they order it they put it on your bike for yeah. you and yeah. then you're all set and you've got like you were saying sort of a higher end um, kit that that's going to be quiet that's that's efficient and and you avoid that cogging yeah. so right. yeah. and rakish i have another simple question so if from a consumer point of view uh, from cons for any consumer there are only two premium kits hub kit one is the bionics the other one is falco the really good ones so what really differentiates falco from bionics and and uh, you know if people are looking at bionics and falco you know uh, what do you what do you think uh, you know why do you think this has an edge or what differentiates this and bionics well see again you know going back to the lessons we have learned in the industry bionics is a proprietary system okay. so that causes a huge oh, amount of problem yeah. for people when you're out of battery, you have to spend a lot of money to get a new battery, right? That, to me, and even the same thing we experienced with electric motion systems and with, with, with the people have spent $3,000, $4,000 on a bicycle, even if you buy a, you know, a proprietary bicycle, you spend even $4,000 on a bicycle, even if you buy a, you know, a, some, spend $8,000, $9,000 on a bicycle, all of a sudden, after two years, your battery's dead. You know, you call the manufacturer, well, the battery is not in stock, or we have changed the chemistry, we no longer support it, hmm. or the battery is gonna cost you $1,000, $2,000, right? That, to me, is not acceptable, hmm. right? It's simply waste of, of your uh, investment I in see. terms of, so that was one part is we want to have a very open system. So this is like Linux and that is like a Mac or PC. Yeah, this is, this is like open source. Is yeah, what exactly, you're so this is the open source. And how, how versatile it is in terms of, you know, uh, consumer like me trying to tweak the parameters, tweak the control system, tweak the torque and how, how open it is. Can we learn it quickly or is there a software that we can use? Well see, we, we, we have, uh, so to answer your question, uh, this uh, system can run with the throttle, can run with the crank sensor, can run with the, with the, with the, pedal, with the, with the, with the torque sensor and can be installed on a front wheel drive as well, oh, right? Cool. So the system is versatile, can run on a 48 volt, can run on a 36 volt. Now, uh, can you learn quickly? Yes, we, you can. You know, we are putting together a series of videos. Uh, one of the issues, you know, we, we, we have not been, uh, uh, you know, we have learned a lot of lessons, right? And we basically are pouring those lessons into videos where people can customize. And then we also have got the, the software yeah. interface, Falco interface, yeah. with which you can uh, very quickly uh, configure your drive. This has been a fun, a fun, uh, visit, you know, and, and the sort of the big takeaway that I've gotten is this is a high quality system that's going to last. It deals with heat well. You know, there were problems with the BMC motor for you know, some of the early Stromer bikes. These can also go faster, can be programmed for those higher sort of off road speeds, and they just look cool. And I like that. It's, it's pretty sweet. They don't have the gears inside that are going to wear out more quickly. Um, and so it's, it's a unique niche. And this is you know, definitely the higher end of direct drive motors. And it's really neat that the, the system is designed to offer you pedal assist, regen, regenerative braking, uh, and, and throttle mode, you know? It's just, it's cool. It's kind of, it's got everything that you could want uh, in, in terms of a, a hub drive system, front or back mounting. So yeah, this is cool. Thanks again, Rakesh. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. <laughs>